Salutations everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. Microsoft has renewed their Jet Force Gemini trademark, so it's good news for anyone who loves killing alien insects along with your twin sister and dog with a jetpack. I know how weird that sounded, but I loved it and you loved it too, let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> A lot of big news this week in the cinematic and television universes for superheroes with no bigger event than the DC Dawn of the Justice League event that they held after uh, the Flash premiere this week. And we got to see some concept art of the Justice League lineup as they're going to be when that film comes out. Uh, which will be uh, next November, uh, with Wonder Woman coming out uh, next June. Those are now official. So this is our very first look ever at what Cyborg and The Flash are going to be looking like in this DC Cinematic Universe. We already knew what Jason Momoa's Aquaman was going to look like, but we're kind of left in the dark about Flash and Cyborg, and seeing this concept art, they look... You know, pretty much what we would expect. No, no surprises, you know. They're pretty faithful to their comic book adaptations from what we can tell and contrasted uh, to Aquaman. And of course, we have the, the Trinity right there up front. So uh, they showed us basically just concept art and like, you know, the roles that these heroes play in the DCU, which we already knew before. Um, but, I mean, it, it was kind of nice. We got to see the first ever footage of the Wonder Woman movie. Um, so that's going to be taking place... In World War II era, that was one of the two main possibilities uh, with Chris Pine uh, being the love interest. And n now we're just going to have to wait for, you know, some real trailers and stuff to reveal plot or, you know, the enemy or what's going to be happening because they basically just gave us a rundown of everything we know. We don't know which Wonder Woman origin they're going with specifically because there's a lot of different ways to have Wonder Woman come into existence. Um, but as far as, you know, the whole Themyscira, Hippolyta stuff, I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, what the origin that they're going to stick with, you know, who the bad guy is going to be, and how they're just going to overall treat um, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman because it's, it's going to be uh, pretty important. So in Marvel's Netflix universe, we have a couple of new announcements. Jessica Jones is getting a second 13-episode uh, season, which is fantastic. That show was just so good, did so many things that no other superhero television or movie really covered or did uh, as big of a justice to as Jessica Jones did when it came into relation uh, with, with, with identity, with role, with responsibility, and relationship with a villain. And it was fantastic, so you could check that out on Netflix if you haven't already, or if you've taken a break from it. It's getting a season two. We don't know where that's going to line up with the, the whole Defenders lineup. We know that we get Luke Cage uh, at the end of this year. We don't know what order they're, they're going to be going with here. Uh, for the next year, is it going to be Iron Fist, then Jessica Jones 2, then Defenders? Or is it going to be Iron Fist, then Defenders, then Jessica Jones 2? We don't know. All that we know is that Daredevil is awesome. Daredevil Season 2 is going to be awesome. In fact, so awesome that they're thinking about spinning off the Punisher for his own series, since we've known from the get-go that they have been really impressed with John Bernthal's performance as the Punisher. And uh, Jessica Jones was awesome, and Iron Fist will hopefully be awesome as well. Luke Cage is going to be awesome because he was awesome in Jessica Jones. And uh, we just we can't wait for Daredevil Season 2 and then Luke Cage uh, at the end of this year. Um, which, of course, by then we'll probably know what order they're going to be going in for the future in 2017. The other awesome property that Disney owns right now, Star Wars, has announced that Episode 8 is being pushed back from May of next year to December of next year. So we're going to have to wait another seven months to get our hands on the next installment after The Force Awakens just blew everybody out of the water with expectations of both quality and quantity of cash money. So 
Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. There was rumors leading up to this announcement that there was going to be rewrites, that the Force Awakens uh, new characters are going to be given bigger roles than uh, initially intended because Disney was really caught off guard about how popular these new characters are, which makes sense to me because they're all amazing. I was surprised on how much I liked the new characters a ton, and it's going to be pushed back. So we don't know if there's going to be a rewrite. So there's also a rumor that they're trying to conquer the month of December, that they're just trying to make the December the Star Wars month since they broke all of the records with The Force Awakens. They saw how much success that they can have in that window. Rogue One is going to be coming out in December of this year. So they're going to, might be hoping that, you know, for 2017, that they can just continue their dominance of the month of December and just make it the Star Wars month. So who knows what exactly is going behind the scenes. We do know that everybody loves the script that has seen it in its original form and that it's going to be a lot darker than The Force Awakens, which were two things I think we could have figured out on our own, but nonetheless are do also very exciting to hear. Um, taking that May 26th slot for next year will be Pipes of the Caribbean 5, which has been pushed up from its initial July release. So that's getting pushed into Star Wars' old slot. Um, we also know that Spider-Man is getting moved up. No really word about anything outside of that. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to wait a little longer. It's not going to be a year and a half between, you know, 7 and 8. But uh, now it's just going to be 12 months until you see a Star Wars movie, regardless of what it is. So, yeah, it's a shame, but as long as it's amazing, I think we can all just, just, just calm our midichlorians down for just a little bit. As mentioned previously, Halo 5 is getting free new updates every single month, and this month's will be rolling out next week. Infinity's Armory will be coming with a new Riptide map, as well as a new Warzone map. And along with the new Warzone map will be a new Warzone uh, REQ weapon in Halo 2's Battle Rifle as like a legendary kind of variant. So that's going to be your free content for Halo 5 for this month, Infinity's Armory. Look forward to it and then watch, you know, Halo 5 at the Winter X Games in Aspen because that's a thing. Nintendo has detailed the Amiibo functionality for Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U. The Midna Wolf Link Amiibo will unlock a new special mini game type of arena thing where you have a certain amount of hearts and then you take down a bunch of enemies and then that saves your like record and you try to beat your record. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, additionally, with the uh, already existing Zelda Amiibos, if you scan in your Link or Toon Link Amiibo, it will refill your arrows. If you scan in your Zelda or Sheik Amiibos, it will refill all of your hearts. And if you sign in the Ganondorf Amiibo, it will unlock a super hard mode in which you take a ton more damage than usual. So it's nice to see an Amiibo actually make the game a little harder instead of adding the bonuses um, kind of similar to what uh, Kirby and the uh, Rainbow Curse did with its three Amiibos in increasing defense and attack and life. So. Um, those are Amiibo functionalities for Twilight Princess HD. They also announced that the um, Midna Wolf uh, Amiibo will have functionality for the new Zelda game that comes out later this year to entice people. It's like, okay, maybe you didn't like Twilight Princess, but you're going to buy the new one, right? And you're going to want to have all the Amiibos for it. This one's going to work. And it also has functionality in the Hyrule Warriors Legends for 3DS, which unlocks a special thing with Binda and Wolf uh, Link, so uh, that's pretty cool. And in the, yep, that's totally real news, the Key and Peele movie Keanu has a Red Band trailer out. Looks like a John Wick parody where uh, a little kitten is stolen and they have to infiltrate the underground gangster world as two super, like, white black guys trying to fit in and talk the talk and walk the walk and try to find their kitten Keanu who's sporting a do-rag now is like the pet of like a gangster lord and uh, it looks hilarious it looks super silly but nonetheless it's key and peel therefore it looks amazing it really does it really does very excited for finally get to see key and peel have one of their own projects starring one another 
um, on the big screen. We know that they're working on that substitute teacher movie. That script is probably still being worked on. We don't know if that's going to get picked up or not. But uh, if this gets success, um, I think we'll have a lot more things to actually laugh about for once in a movie theater. Uh, which will be a nice little change of pace because there haven't been really any good comedies in the last five years or so. Anywho, that is what mattered this week. If you would like to know what matters in the future, hit the subscribe button. One of these comes out every single Saturday. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next time.